Hey, good morning, Pete, North Las Vegas. I uh, just thought I'd do a quick video on my uh, brand new Ellie Wilson uh, mandrel die. And maybe talk about why I decided to go with a mandrel instead of relying on the ball expanders on my uh, full length sizing dies. So we'll kind of get into that. And then I'm gonna measure the mandrel on the Ellie Wilson and just show you how accurate Ellie Wilson is. Okay, so before we really get into this video, um, I, I need to say that I'm not precision reloading, or I'm not talking about that in this video. Um, I generally load to SAMI spec. And the reason I load to SAMI spec or minimum SAMI specs for rifle chambers is I have 13 different AR platforms. And I wanna make sure that my ammunition will run in any rifle that I, that I choose. So I'm not loading for a specific chamber or a specific rifle. I'm loading to minimum SAMI specs. Okay, so the way I've reloaded in the past was to get my uh, fired brass and I would clean it and then I would uh, full length size it. And this is RCBS and that's a Dillon die. And I would full length resize it into press. And uh, so once I got the primer knocked out and got this thing uh uh, resized, then I would come over here and use my uh, RCBS uh, trim pro to trim the length of the brass. And um, some of what I'm saying here, it's kind of geared towards people that maybe are new to reloading. Uh, for you guys that have been reloading for a while, uh, some of this is like, yeah, I already know. But anyway, um, so I was able to get my brass trimmed uh, pretty accurate, and I could stay within about a thousandth. And uh, trim left for 223.556 is uh, 1.750. And the maximum uh, length for your brass is uh, 6.0. But for trimming, uh, 5.0 is, is SAMI spec. And that's what all your reloading manuals will tell you. So like I said, I was able to get some pretty good accuracy, some repeatable accuracy with this thing. Probably plus or minus about a thousandth. And after you get a feel for how much uh, pressure to put on the hand crank and and how much uh, you're trimming. Um, you, can, you can get some pretty good repeatability, but after you do a few hundred rounds, it's like the thrill is gone. Okay, so after the thrill is gone, you're gonna be looking at ways to either try to uh, automate this a little bit more. And I saw a lot of videos where people were taking uh, cordless uh, screwdrivers and drills or electric drills and uh, using that to power this thing so they wouldn't have to hand crank it. And then the RCBS also sells a drive unit for this thing, but I, I didn't care for it too much, just the way it was designed. I'm sure it works fine. I'm sure a lot of people use it, but I just decided I didn't want to go that route. So I decided to go with the uh, Dillon. And I have a Dillon XL650 uh, Progressive Press. So I thought, well, I'll buy the Dillon. And another reason that I chose the Dillon was um, they use a full length sizing die uh, to, to run the brass up here on your press. And then as you come up, uh, you'll adjust this to where it trims the brass. And that carbide cutter will, will trim the brass. Now, the reason I decided to go with this design is it indexes off the base. And, and trims off the base. Other designs I've seen like the Giroud and some of the hand, more hand trimmers that you use drills or whatever, they index off the shoulder to, to cut the length. And for me personally, I just decided that I would rather index off the base to trim the length. Um, I don't, like I said, that was just my personal preference, which is one of the main reasons I went with the Dillon instead of some of the other offerings they have. Uh, on the market. Okay, so my Diller, Dillon uh, trimming setup, um, like I was saying in an earlier clip, it will full length size this piece of brass and get it back to uh, minimum SAMI specs, but the one thing it doesn't do is it will not size the ID of the neck. So this is one area where I'm kind of deviating from loading to SAMI spec by using a, a full length sizing die. I was wanting to get 
as close as I could to about a two thousandths uh, neck tension around the bullet. And these are pretty close. But what I noticed was, like I'm using this Dillon as an example, but both the uh, RCBS, Focus, Expander Ball on the RCBS, and the Dillon, depending on where you measure it, it can be about five ten thousandths up to almost one thousandth um, out of round. So the ball expanders are pretty tight. I mean, if you're just loading the Sammy specs, they'll, they'll be plenty good. But like I said, this is one area where I wanted to get a little bit more precise is on my neck tension. And for me, I've decided that two thousandths is what I want. Other people want more three, four, five thousandths neck tension. Uh, if you're a precision reloader, you may not want as much. You may not want any neck tension. But for me, I decided two thousandths. And like I said, measuring both of these expander balls on the Dillon and the RCBS, there's a very, very slight amount of variance. So that's why we ended up with the Wilson. Okay, so in the earlier clips, I said that I wanted about 2,000 uh, neck tension on my brass. Uh, the nominal dimension for 223556 bullets is uh, 224. So I need the ID of the brass to end up at about 222 to get 2,000 uh, squeeze on the bullet for neck tension. So before we jump on the Ellie Wilson and I show you the actual measurements, I'll show you what I'm using to measure. Um, dial indicator calipers and digital calipers and verniers are usually only accurate to about one thousandth of an inch. That's about the best you're going to get with, with calipers. And um, what I'm using is an old pair of uh, Sterrett's. I bought this back in the early 80s. And this Sterrett uh, came calibrated and it was traceable to the National Bureau of Standards which back when I bought this, that's what they were called. They didn't change their name to NIST until uh, about 1988. So NIST, um, it used to be MBS, and then they became NIST, National Institute of Standards Technology. So this, this micrometer is traceable to NIST, meaning it's been calibrated and it's accurate to its, its stated vernier, which is one ten thousandths. So... Why did I choose Ellie Wilson? I know there's other mandrels on the market. Um, the other big one I think is 21st century and they come with different size mandrels. Me personally, I just decided that 2000s is the neck tension that I want. I don't need to go any tighter and I don't need to go any looser. So that's part of the reason I went with the Ellie Wilson. Also, I have bought other Ellie Wilson in the past and the machining is impeccable. This stuff is so precise when it shows up Everything I bought from them, it's never had a nick, a scratch, any kind of defect on it. It's the machining on these things has always been, you know, close to perfect. Okay, so we'll take a look at uh, what Ellie Wilson says. You can see here, standard mandrel sizes are set up to one thousandth under bullet to account for slight spring back of your cases. So this is going to be set up for about two, two, three to expand the ID. So they're taking into account spring back. So after they expand this with the mandrel to 223, it should spring back to right at about 222. So I don't have an actual piece of brass. I haven't used this mandrel yet, but we'll, we'll measure the mandrel to see if it comes in right at 223. Okay, so here's the mandrel and it's it's marked for 22 focus, marked for 22 caliber, but it should expand to 0.223, as I said in the earlier clip. Now I'm gonna get this on the, the micrometer off camera and then I'll show you where it comes in because it's too hard to do one-handed. I don't have a stand for this, uh, this phone yet. But anyway, we'll get it on the micrometer and I'll show you where it comes in at. What, we, what we're looking for is like a perfect 223. Okay, so I have the mandrel inside the micrometer, and you can see by the, the dial, it's sitting right on 
223. And you're going to have to trust me on the uh, 10 thousandths reading. It's on zero on the other side of the thimble. So it's like a perfect 223 according to this micrometer that's traceable to the National Institute of Standards Technology. So this mandrel is a perfect 223. And with spring back on my piece of brass, the ID of the brass after I press it with the mandrel should end up right about 222, two, two, which gives me a two thousandths press fit around a 224 bullet. So that is why I like Ellie Wilson. And uh, like I said at the beginning of the video, or at least I think I did, um, this thing came with, with not a nick or a scratch on it. All the thread engagement, I mean, when you spin the, uh, the mandrel into the threads, the locking nut, everything is just smooth as glass. It's just a, a beautiful mandrel. Now, I know there's other companies out there that make these mandrels. Um, one of the more popular ones is uh, 21st Century. And um, just based on my past experience with Ellie Wilson, um, I just decided to go with them because I was pretty sure I was gonna get just complete precision. Um, the one thing about 21st Century is they give you different mandrel sizes for 22 caliber in five ten thousandths increments. So they give you a little bit more choice about um, how much you're gonna expand your brass. But like I said, for me personally, I've just decided, I've landed on 2000 neck tension, which is what I'm looking for. So just the Ellie Wilson with the, with the single mandrel was, uh, was good enough. Anyway, I hope I made sense here. I hope I didn't get things too far out of whack or out of sequence. Uh, Pete North Las Vegas, over and out.